You're listening to the Rauha, daily guidance for seekers with Sheikh Faraz Rabbani. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa afdalu salati wa tammu taslim. Ala Sayyidina wa Sanadina Muhammad. Habibi Rabbil Alameen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa atba'ihi. Ila yawmiddin. اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل وألهمنا رشدنا يا رب العالمين الحمد لله In our daily sessions on the Rauha in which we look at reminders on our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the guidance of his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم we're looking at Imam, Imam Abu Abdul Rahman Al-Sulami's work, the blameworthy traits of the self and their treatments. And this has been recently published after a long time um, in a draft mode by Sheikh Musa Ferber as the infamies of the soul. Um, and it's available on, online and it's a, it's a valuable translation on an important topic. Um, so he says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Imam Abu Abdul Rahman Sulami, وَمِنْ عُيُوبِهَا أَتَّرَسُّمُ بِرَسْمِ الصَّلَاحِ مِنْ غَيْرِ مُطَالَبَةِ الْقَلْبِ بِالْإِخْلَاصِ فِيمَا تَرَسَّمَ بِهِ مِنَ الصَّلَاحِ From the blameworthy traits of the lower self, right, of one's desires and one's whims is taking on the appearances of righteousness without demanding from one's heart sincerity in those things that one has manifested of righteousness. And this is one of the great harms of religiosity that a lot of people it's almost politically incorrect to say but it's something that you know there's many warnings in the prophetic tradition about that very often when people start becoming religious they can end up worse off than than how they were before they got religious why because before they just felt I'm a nobody. But now suddenly they decide to become religious. So they dress a certain way. You know, they put on a hijab. They grow a beard. They su- suddenly buy an expensive misbaha. They put on the right perfumes. You know, they even maybe adopt the right lingo before everyone was... So how are you doing, Zain? Now it's Sidi Zain. How are you, Ustaz? Before it was just your friend who knew something about Islam. Now he's Ustaz. You know, you you learn the outward, you know, subtleties. I mean, you go to the nth degree. You actually burn high quality uh, incense too. You 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 don't just do those funny incense sticks. You got the real wood. You do all these. All these things, and as a West African friend of mine said very memorably when we were together in Indonesia, he said, this is not deen, it is decoration. Okay? It's decoration. Right? And the problem with that decoration is that this is the breeding ground of insincerity. It is the breeding ground of insincerity and one needs to know that the blameworthy traits of the self some of them have clear outward manifestations that are obvious right that are obvious some things are obvious but there's others that are subtle and those that are subtle are no less harmful are, are no less harmful And the blameworthy inclinations of the self, some of them relate 
to things that are sinful. Those are easy to catch. Right? Someone has the desire to do something haram. Right? Now you deal with that desire, but it's, if you have even a modicum of self-awareness, it's not difficult to deal with. Someone wants to go, you know, eat pork ribs. Haram. Right? It's easy to catch if one has some degree of self-awareness. That No, don't do it. But one of the types of inclinations of the self that are potentially much more harmful is when you incline to do something that is apparently good. Apparently good. You decide to pray extra after Maghrib. But in actuality, you never do it except in front of other people. Right? So there, there are many possibilities of what the intention is. Because you could actually be doing it because you feel that you should be acting on the sunnah of engaging in extra voluntary prayer, nafil, after Maghrib. Right? Sayyidina al-Hudayfa, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he mentions that he once went with the Prophet ﷺ to his home after Maghrib, and the Prophet ﷺ spent the whole time between Maghrib and Isha in prayer at home. Um, and it's a recommendation has come to spend between Maghrib and Isha in the masjid. There's many recommendations on extra prayer during that time, because it's a time of ghafla. Um, and the fuqaha mentioned the praiseworthiness of praying six rakahs up to 20 rakahs of what is called Salatul Awabin, the prayer of the Penitent. The scholars differed. Is specific, this specifically Salatul Awabin referring to Salatul Duha, the mid, midday prayer, or praying between Maghrib and Isha? But that's the difference in terms of the naming. In general, the praiseworthiness of praising, praying extra after Maghrib is established. Now, for you to, to do that anytime you go to the mosque or come to a religious place is not necessarily bad because maybe you realize this is something I really should be doing. You are inspired by the presence of others. The intention could be good, but it could also be bad. Right? And when you're not careful of these hidden motives, because the motive in doing the haram is obvious, but the, but the motive in, in engaging in these kinds of works could be devastating. It could be spiritually devastating. And there, one has to, as he says, مِنْ غَيْرِ مُطَالَبَةِ الْقَلْبِ بِالْإِخْلَاصِ Without demanding sincerity from your heart. And demanding sincerity from your heart. One does not leave the good. So if you never do extra prayers after Maghrib, but you get the thought then why don't I pray six rakahs? The solution is not not to do it, that, oh my God, I might be insincere. No. What we know from the sunnah of our beloved Prophet ﷺ is, إِحْرِسْ عَلَى مَا يَنْفَعُكُ وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا تَعْجَسْ Be avid for what will benefit you. Does praying extra benefit you? Yes. So therefore you do it. إِسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ Seek Allah's assistance. ولا تعجز. Don't deem yourself incapable. Rather, make a sincere intention for the sake of Allah. Strive to, to be sincere and do it. The early Muslim said, leaving actions. So acting for other than Allah, acting for other than Allah is showing off. Right? Is being insincere. Right? Is riya. Riya is showing off or insincerity. But leaving actions for the sake of other than Allah is also showing off, is also insincerity. Sincerity is that Allah free you from both states. Right? Is that Allah free you from both states. You're only safe if you demand sincerity from yourself. You are only safe if you demand sincerity from yourself before 
you act. And that's where you have to question your motives. Right? Suddenly you decide, okay, I'm going to go dressed in a thobe and turban. You always have to ask yourself, why? If, you're, if the intention is genuinely to seek the pleasure of Allah, do so. If it's not, then if you can make a sincere intention, if you can strive to make it sincere for Allah, do so. If you still can't, then if it's a voluntary matter, or it's, a, it's not, they say if it's, a, if it's an emphasized sunnah, struggle with the intention anyways. So someone, let's say, doesn't do their emphasized sunnahs. They go to the masjid, it's all these religious people, I might as well do the sunnah too. When it comes to emphasize sunnahs, you demand sincerity, you struggle with it. But when it comes to the sunnahs of habits, right, the sunnahs of habits, sunnah al-adat, like wearing a turban, for example, right, or wearing obviously religious clothing, etc. There, if you can make a sincere intention, excellent. If you can struggle to make an intention, do so. Because it's something that is praiseworthy. And you try to multiply your intention. How am I doing this for the sake of Allah? Think through the ways. Right? That, that this is from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. It is modest dress. It is beautiful dress. It is the dress of the righteous. I want to be like the righteous. Right? You ask Allah, you know, to, you, you know that Allah, I'm, you know, I am trying to make my outward righteous. I ask you to grant me assistance in making my inward righteous. So you work with your intention. But even then, if you don't find the intention, then you have to have extreme caution. Right? Because insincerity creeps in through this back door. One of the safeguards of sincerity is to consult. Is to consult. Have, a fr- you know, have teachers you may consult. Have friends who have taqwa, right? who have iman and taqwa. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, لَا تُصَاحِبْ إِلَّا مُؤْمِنًا Keep the close company only of true believers. وَلَا يَأْكُلْ طَعَامَكَ إِلَّا تَقِيْءٍ And let your eating companions be the people of piety, the people of taqwa. Right? Because you, 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 one talks about one's day-to-day with them. So you have this thought, I'm going to start wearing a turban, to all religious events. Something like that. Consult. Consult. Consult your teachers. Right? Like for example, with that, I have a friend who asked one of you know, our, a teacher of ours. He said, I want to start wearing a turban. He said, it's, that's a blessed move. It's because of sunnah, etc. He said, however, he said, first, make sure you've, pray, you've prayed all your obligatory prayers on time for 120 days. Because otherwise, it's like, you're all dressed up and nowhere to go. Right? Right? Because sincerity has its signs. Right? Now, if that came to, I'm thinking of doing the sunnah of dhuhr, but I always pray dhuhr in the masjid, and I'm worried about sincerity. No. With emphasized sunnahs, with specific sunnahs, you struggle with sincerity. But with the general nawafil, etc. The other thing is, start practicing them at home. Start practicing them at home. You want to start wearing religious dress? Wear it at home. Allahu ahaqqan yustaha minhu minan nas. Allah is more deserving of your hayat than people are. One of the other safeguards of sincerity, they say, is the muqtada of sidq, what is entailed by trueness, which is to make your public action the same as your private action, and your private action the same as your public action. So for example, if you want to say, okay, I want to start eating when, where feasible with my hands. It's from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, right? It's a, from the sunnahs of habits, it's a recommended matter. It's not an emphasized sunnah, but it, it is there from Islamic manners. Now, if you want to start eating rice and other things with your hands in public, make this, do the same thing in private. I say, oh no, it's much more comfortable to eat with a fork. How, why is it more comfortable at home? Than in public. Just because you, you want to look good. Right? So a safeguard is do the same thing. You want to start doing your emphasized sunnahs, make the commitment. If I'm doing it in public, 
You have to question yourself about doing it in private. Don't leave doing it in public, but you, demanding sincerity entails demanding what is entailed by sincerity. And there's a talazum. There is a um, there is an interrelationship between sincerity, ikhlas, and sidq, and being true. Which is why many of the imams of hadith and those who wrote on Islamic virtues mentioned in the Sidq and Ikhlas, being true and sincere together. Babu Sidqi wal Ikhlas, the chapter on being true and being sincere. Or they mention them next to each other because of how closely they're related. You can look in Riyadh al Salihin of Imam al of Imam al Nawawi, for example. So one needs to be careful about this with prayer as well, right? Praying outwardly with a sense of righteousness, without demanding inward righteousness, is dangerous. Which doesn't mean that you don't take care of the outward, but you also have to demand righteousness from the inward. And you have to also be careful about yourself. Because sometimes, self, you know, the, the, the person, very often, that we most want to impress, is not other people. Ultimately, all satisfaction is self-satisfaction. Because when you impress another, in reality, whom are you impressing? Yourself, right? So that I want to project righteousness to another, but ultimately, why do I want to do that? Because I want to feel impressed by myself. Right? The, shortest, the shortest way to that is just by being impressed by myself. You, you pray at night, you say, wow, like I did everything right, great. Hey, no, hold on. Where is the inward in that? Where is the inward in that? So to always think about those two matters. Everything, that, the righteous, that being true as a servant of God is for one's outward to correspond to one's inward and one's inward to correspond to one's outward. It has come in a hadith um, related by... Um, by, by Fatima from Asma ta'ala, anhunna, that a woman asked, O Messenger of Allah, I have a, a co wife, right? Um, so is it okay if I pretend that my husband is giving me things? That he hasn't given me. Right, so that she feels jealous of me. So the Prophet ﷺ said, المتشبه بما لم يعطى كلابس ثوبي زور The one who pretends to have what they haven't been given is like someone who's wearing garment, you know, uh, fake clothing. Is one, like one who's wearing fake clothing. It's not the real thing. It's like someone puts on the, the clothing of the king, say, I'm the king of, of Tomkin. <laughs> no, you're not. You're just <laughs> dressed up. Right? It's just a fake. And, it, and, and Imam Bukhari mentioned this in, in a chapter he- heading. Right? And similarly has been related from um, Sayyidina, uh, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. So what is the treatment, he says? وَمُدَاوَاتُهَا تَرْكُ الْخُشُوعِ فِي الظَّاهِرِ إِلَّا بِقَدْرِ الْخُشُوعِ فِي الْبَاطِنِ Is to leave outward khushu' outward humbledness, except to the extent of inward humbledness. Right. Meaning, be very careful of all outward improvements, except insofar as you have connected them with inward improvements. This does not leave, the ulama tell us, this does not mean leaving the sunnas. There is a criterion, and you intend in it, ittiba, following. And that is, mafrugh minhu. That is, like everybody is under that banner of ittiba. Right? It is not any type of showing off to follow the sunnah, right? So what does one do? One learns, one acts on the obligatory, necessary, emphasized sunnah, recommended sunnahs. Following those, 
is not from showing off. One makes the intention of ittiba, of following the sunnah, right? Of following the sunnah, and never leave that standard because that's because the, the the fundamental standard of goodness is the sunnah. Implement that, but demand from yourself with the meaning of outward following. Always demand sincerity that this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? This is for Allah. Then number two, demand trueness. Strive to make your private like your public. And vice versa. In your worship, in your adab, in your proper manners. If you see righteous ulama, how they dress at home. If, you're, if you dress in dignified clothing outside, dress in dignified clothing inside. Because okay. ultimately all beautification is for the most beautiful, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah jameel yuhibbul jaan. Truly Allah is beautiful. He loves beauty. Now of course you may not dress in exactly the same way, but there's dignified clothing for home. Right? And the same thing, as appropriate to the context. مِمَّا يَرَى فِي قَلْبِهِ وَسِرِّهِ of that, مِمَّا يُرَى فِي قَلْبِهِ وَسِرِّهِ of what is seen in one's heart and inward لِأَنَّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالَ الْمُتَشَبِّعُ بِمَا لَمْ يُعْطَى كَلَابِسِ ثَوْبَيْ زُور right? the hadith that we quoted right? the one who um, fills themselves or pretends to have that which they don't is like someone who's wearing f- fake clothing Right, um, so this this requires attention, right? And one of the grave harms is people who begin with their religiosity with purely outward connections to religious guidance, only outward connections to the Sunnah. Strive to have a healthy religious life, to always be cultivating your outward religiosity. And always cultivating your inward spiritual health, right? your sincerity, your trueness, the other traits of the heart. And regarding that, one of the best resources that we have available in English is a wonderful uh, podcast series by uh, our dear friend, Ustad Amjad Tarsin, uh, Soul Food, which you can find at soulfood.fm. It is very, very beneficial. It's now into its sixth season. Um, and they're brief, uh, topical, uh, very inspiring, um, full of wisdom, and very practicable. Um, so that's a way of cultivating this self-awareness um, in, a, in a positive way and to bring that inward righteousness that must be cultivated. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina wa Nabina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين. Thank you for listening to the Rauha, daily guidance for seekers with Sheikh Faroz Rabbani. Help Seekers Hub give light to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org/donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.